you're just in time. We're getting ready to start another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar. This is Wednesday. It is the 6th of September, which means tomorrow, being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I go on at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, when the market's closing, I'm opening up. (laughs) Me and my co-host, and I think I'll have a co-host this week, that's still up in the air because Taylor's on her honeymoon. We can't interrupt that. In either case, the show must go on and I will be there. Going to be there for an hour talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share stocks you want me to look at. I'll go over the information. If my co-host is there, they'll go over the chart. If not, I'll go over the chart and we or I will give you our opinions. Now, we're only there for an hour, so if you really want to make sure your ticker gets looked at, drop it in early. Before 4 o'clock, you can. I put up a placeholder for the video around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Just drop your comment in there anytime after that. It'll be waiting for me, and that'll give me time before the show starts to actually look at it and get more information for you. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, every Thursday. So what we do on this show is I go out hunting every day. I'm looking for three stocks to share with you. Normally, stocks that are under 5 bucks on any market. Those are called penny stocks. But I'm looking for stocks that meet two of my criteria. They got to have a hot chart and they got to have a catalyst. That makes sense, right? Now we've got a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you every day. Well, I've got three of them to share with you right now. A couple of them are cannabis. One isn't. Now, we've got to take a look at cannabis stocks right now because the DEA last week was asked by HHS, which is Health and Human Services, They asked the DEA to reschedule cannabis from the dangerous Schedule 1 down to the safe Schedule 3. And the HHS did this by the bidding of President Biden. So we have it coming down from the top to the DEA. This is the most recent piece of news that I have found. We knew that the HHS had reached out to the DEA and asked them. And that was all we knew. Well, they tell us here on August 29, 2023, the United States Department of Health and Human Services sent a letter with its recommendations on marijuana to the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, after the U.S. President, Mr. Joe Biden, requested the HHS secretary conduct a review of how marijuana is scheduled. Now, this next paragraph is very important. It's new information. I can now share that following the data and science, HHSGov has responded to POTUS directive to me for the department to provide a scheduling recommendation for marijuana to the DEA. We've worked to ensure that a scientific evaluation be completed and shared expeditiously, HHS Secretary Xavier Becara shared in a post. We can confirm the DEA received a letter from the Department of Health and Human Services. The DEA has the final authority to schedule or reschedule a drug under the Controlled Substance Act. They've got the final say. That means it doesn't have to go to the House of Representatives or to the Senate or even to Biden. Once they make a decision, the decision is done and it is going to go into act. Now, is it going to happen? Well, all I can say is it's coming from the right place, from the president down to HHS, you know, a human service for us reaching out to them. And they say they've got scientific evidence they can give them when they ask for it. So I don't know what sort of delay there's going to be here, but it is a prime catalyst for the cannabis industry. And we've been looking at cannabis stocks here because a lot of them are running and most of them, if not all of them that I have shared with you, have been taking gains. Well, I got another one here, probably one you haven't heard of, and we need to look at it now because this company just had a reverse split. Now's the time to look at it. They're not going to be doing another one (laughs) anytime soon, not to mention they brought the share count down to a low float. The charts show that it was a successful reverse split. She didn't come crashing back down. She went from like three, three and a half cents up to 40 cents, somewhere like that. And she's holding that position right now, as you can see, 42.9 cents. She was up about 42 and a half percent today. She's on the QX, 
This is a great place to be on the OTC. Forget about those pinks, folks. That's a lot of danger, danger. Pinks should be red. You don't get validated information with pinks, not with the financials, not with their information. They don't give validated information and they're not required to. Buyer, beware. All you get from pinks is the management's word. So if you're gonna do DD, study up on the management because it's what they're telling you that's got the stock moving. Or you could wait till they actually do something. These companies are doing something. QXs have their financials audited. We have a verified profile here. They're even penny stock exempt. Penny stock exempt is an extra bonus for you, especially on the OTC. That means that no matter what their price is, they're not a penny stock. In other words, they're not a risky startup company. How do we know that? Because the company has proven it by being in business for three to five years with millions of dollars of revenues or assets during that entire time, and they've kept up with their financials. They're acting like adults. They're being responsible, and that's what we're looking for. So everything looks really solid here. Not to mention they've got independent directors listed, and I only know of one reason why they list independent directors in this column. That's when they have intentions to uplist, and you have to have independent directors to uplist. Now, I haven't read anything, but they're sitting there, so it is a consideration. So let's get some information on Lowell Farms, ticker L-O-W-L-D. Did I forget to mention that? <laughs> Lowell Farms is a California-based, vertically integrated cannabis company with advanced production capabilities supporting every step of the supply chain, including cultivation, extraction, manufacturing, brand sales, marketing, and distribution. Being a vertical company, and that's what most all the cannabis companies are we're looking at, they do everything from seed to sale, seed to shelf. Every single step, they are in control of it all. They are responsible, liable, control all the prices, make all the profits. They go on to tell us here that Lowell Farm grows artesian craft cannabis. That's their specialty. With deep love and respect for the plant. That matters. <laughs> and prides itself on using sustainable materials from seed to sale to produce an extensive portfolio of award-winning original brands, including Lowell Herb Company, House Brands, and Kaizen Extracts for licensed retailers statewide. Now let's jump over to their website. They've got a couple websites considering how many different products they have, and you'll find that with a lot of cannabis companies. They'll have a website for each brand. So just to go to the company's website isn't enough if you really want to see what's going on with them. So there's a lot of due diligence you can do. I'm going to two of them here. So you can get an idea of what sort of products that they've got. Now I can't remember, I think this company is in eight states. I think we're going to see that here. But California was their primary home setting. That's where they grew from. This is some of their products. They are well known for their pre-rolls, but they sell flowers so you can do your own thing. They have vapes. Uh, they have all sorts of concentrates, whether it be hash, uh, rosin. Now, this is just one of their brands. Another one of their brands Something they've just launched that you'll see in the news are their long pre-rolls. These are as long as cigarettes. In case you don't know, joints are a lot smaller than cigarettes. And these come in packs of 10. Now, that basically comes out to an eighth of an ounce, 3.5 grams. That's what they got. There, there it is, eighth of an ounce. And it is a full-size cigarette. Now, it looks like it has a filter, but it's actually called a crutch. It looks like that. It's this woven rounded cardboard stuff and that's just to keep particles of your marijuana from coming through and getting on your lips it may grab some of the tar you know just being in the way because let me tell you marijuana's got a lot of tar and ash if you smoke bongs or pipes you know what i'm talking about it's really dirty i would like to try joints with a filter see if i still get high does the filter bother my highness well let's trap all of that tar all that ash i really don't like that aspect of it but i do like the crutch this is a european thing they all take a little piece of cardboard and roll it up and put it in the end of their joints but then they also mix tobacco with their marijuana these are 100 percent so this is a new product that they are launching right now they're putting a lot of steam behind this 
Now, before we go running back to the OTC markets, got a little more information I want to share with you about the company founded in a recent news press about their financials. They tell us here that they were involved in a sales leaseback transaction for a processing facility. Now, this isn't a unique concept. As a matter of fact, a lot of cannabis companies are doing this right now. As I told you, every state you work in, you have to buy property and build up your facilities. Well, after a while, you own a lot. That's a lot of assets you can cash in on. And that's what they're doing now because they need the money. So they are selling them to companies like Rights, and they are getting money for them and then just turning around and leasing their own properties right back. And that's what Lowell did. They sold one of their processing facilities for just under $20 million, and they signed a 10-year lease. So now they're paying rent for the next 10 years, but they've got $20 million that they can use right now. Looking at their production, this last quarter they did 6.7 thousand pounds of marijuana. That's how much they actually grew and produced compared to the first quarter of this year where they were at 4.9 thousand. So almost 2,000 more pounds. And would you believe this last quarter they had 36 harvests and the first quarter of this year they had 42 harvests. <laughs> a lot of you are confused. You're going, wait a minute. How's that possible? I know weeds grow fast, but not that fast. Actually, it's an assembly line growth pattern. You grow in the back, you plant all your seeds, and like every week or 10 days, you move them forward, plant new seeds. And you just keep doing that. And by the time they reach the front after 18 or 22 weeks, you have them ready to harvest. So every 7 to 10 days, there is a harvest there for you. We also get a list of their states. I thought they had eight states. It's actually only six, but they're good states. California, their home state, Massachusetts, Illinois, Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico. So they're in six states. They've got numerous brands, and their revenues are holding strong. They're not growing real fast, but their revenues are holding strong, and they're bringing working capital in. Everything is looking good. Let's go take a look at that relative volume for the company. That's pretty low. I mean, it's definitely under the radar, but it's a nice jump today, not number-wise, but volume-wise. She jumped from 3.9 thousand up to 12.9 thousand. You're looking at over 300% increase. Share structure for Lowe's? Oh, right. They had that reverse split. I've got a piece of news over here that'll explain that. They tell us that it was a 1 to 10 reverse split, which took their shares from 112 million down to 11.2 million. I don't know what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count, which is 11.2 million. So we are right there near a legitimate low float of 10 million. And it could be considerably less. It could be 4 million, 3 million, who knows? Whatever it is, it is a nice float now. Financials for low. All right, looking over the last four years, they've had some increase and then all of a sudden a decrease. $10 million drop from 2021 to 2022. I'm not real sure why, but I know they've been working on streamlining. A lot of cannabis companies have. Quarterly, she was at $13 million a year ago. She is half of that right now, $7 million. Nothing to be proud of, I will guarantee. But things aren't looking bad. They were bad. It looks like they're improving right now. Looking at our disclosures for the company. Well, we do have some over here, but none that we need to pay any mind to. The 8K is about the reverse split, and all these Form 4s are about options, not even shares. So we can go on by that and jump on into that news. So I have scrolled back here to March 15th. This is when they started looking around to sell their properties, bring money in, get things streamlined. So they've been working on that for about five months now. Then here in May, Lowell unveils their all-new Lowell Infused 35s, the long cigarette joints I was showing you, at a Bottle Rock Napa Valley Festival. And then their last piece of news, the share consolidation. So basically, you're up on what they're doing right now. They're doing business as usual. But they could sure use a catalyst, like maybe the DEA legalizing marijuana, or at least what we like to term legalizing. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Let's do some charting for Lowell Farms. And we're going to do it on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade years ago, and I have loved it ever since. And signing up with them, that's free too. 
So we are looking at low farms. We are looking at ticker L-O-W-L-D. Now I point this out because that D is going to fall off. That is a transient letter that they put at the end of a ticker whenever some sort of change is happening with the company. Name change, ticker change, share change, or their reverse split. Once all that information is updated, the D is going to fall off and they'll get their F back. It's an F because they're a foreign company, which I failed to mention. This is a Canadian company, but they are working in the United States. So this is her real chart. This is where she'll go back to once she loses that D. Six months ago, she was at 22 cents and she was in a long fall, hitting a low here of two cents. And that was at the beginning of this month. Then she had her reverse split. She did that on the 30th of August, jumping from about three cents up to 45 cents. She did drop back. She dropped here to about 20 cents. And from there, she has been growing. Unlike a lot of stocks after a reverse split that just keep falling. Now, maybe it was just good timing. You can see we've got about four days, five days here of climbing. Well, that's about how long the DEA buzz has been out there. So maybe that is helping support this. So she's been pushing up from that uh, 45 cents. Right now, she closed the day at roughly 36 cents. And we have a new SMA on the board now, a 20 day. Not a lot of information on this chart because it hasn't been here very long. Our oscillators are a little mixed up. Our PPO is pushing down, MACD is pushing down, but our RSI is climbing. Let's look at our five day, five minute. It's really the same picture, exactly the same picture. She's bounced off of her 50 on the five minute. She's put herself back up on top of the 20, wrestling with the nine day. The oscillators look weak. They all look like she is still on a downtrend right now. It doesn't look like it up here, but it sure looks like it down here. I think it's one to watch now that she has a low float and there is this buzz in the air about a possible change in the scheduling of cannabis. This company would benefit directly from that. So she would bounce. So ticker L-O-W-L-D right now. And if you can't find it when you go looking for it, change the D to an F. That's where she'll be. Our next penny stock is a hot penny stock coming off of the NASDAQ. She had big news come out today, but there was even bigger news hiding inside the news press that was not in the headlines. So big, it had her volume going to the moon. Yesterday, she was doing less than a million shares. Today, she did over a hundred million shares. This is ticker NBSE, New Base Therapeutics. She finished today at $2.38 with almost 107% gains. Now, as I said, she is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. No transaction fees as far as I know with any broker for major exchange stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, after-market, where there is a lot of activity if you've got the time. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us here that New Base Therapeutics is a preclinical stage biopharmaceutical company focusing on the development of therapies to treat rare genetic diseases and cancers caused by mutant genes. Now, I myself am not real crazy about preclinical stage. That's way before the trials even start. So you've got anywhere from five to eight years before a drug is going to hit the market. This is a company that is going to be doing research and development for a very long time, and they need money constantly. And if they don't get it from big investors, they're going to get it from their little investors. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Explosive is the word that comes to my mind, jumping from just about a half a million shares a day to over 105 million shares. Tell me there isn't a lot of excitement around this company. Share structure. This is the other golden egg. This is going to build up to a crescendo here, folks. We have a super duper low float. Outstanding share count is only at 1.7 million roughly, and your float can't be any higher than the outstanding share count. So we have a tremendously low float, which does come into play with the news. Taking a look at the financials for NBSC, well, that's quick and easy. They got nothing coming in, but don't let that worry you. That isn't going to affect the catalyst whatsoever. Looking at the disclosures for the company. So we have a Form 3 here, which is telling you how many shares the management is holding. 
We have a SC13D, which correlates to the big news. We're going to take a look at that. And you have your most recent financial here. But we also have a Form 4 back here. This Form 4 shows us a nice investment coming from the founder and CEO. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders buy or sell shares. Well, the founder, the CEO, he just made a nice purchase here. He bought himself 93,234 shares at 22 cents a piece. Now, what's really special about this purchase is he is the founder. The founder is the person who invented the company, who started the company, who was there when it was given life. You know they care about the company more than anybody else. So when I see the founder and a CEO buying into the company, that says a lot to me. What's about ready to happen? Maybe he has faith in the DEA's decision. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So we didn't have to go too far back here. I'm looking at August 3rd, New Base Therapeutics to explore strategic alternatives, which is what leads into the news that came out today. Symmetrics Corporation acquires 20% stock in New Base. But that's only half the story. As I said, they didn't put everything in the headlines. Today, Symmetrics Corporation announced that it has acquired 20% of the company's issued and outstanding common stock. Symmetric is now urging the board, are you ready for this, to issue a special $1 per share dividend. A $1 dividend. Now think about this. The company's only got 1.7 million shares, right? Well, they go on to tell us here that the company just reported approximately $14.7 million cash on the books. They've got that money. So they could give away $1.6 million to their investors, give us some shareholder value, and it really wouldn't bother them. And that's exactly the way Symmetric sees it. Symmetric has bought these shares on the open market and intends to engage with the management of Newbase to chart the best path forward for shareholders. Symmetric notes that for the quarter ended June 30th of this year, Newbase reported approximate cash balance of $14.7 million. Symmetric is of the view that the cash position of the company makes Newbase a very attractive merger candidate and it does not believe that a $1 per share dividend would make the company any less attractive. So maybe that's going to happen. And that really is the big push here. Yes, the stock is up to $2.38, but if you can get a dollar back for every share you're buying, maybe it's worth it to you. Even if you're not interested in the dividend, you would be interested in the stock running. But of course you'd be interested in the dividend. Why wouldn't you? It's not shares in the stock. It's cash, cash money. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look now at the chart for NBSE. This is a one year, one day chart for new base therapeutics. This will give us an idea of her 52 week high and low. It was a year ago, she had her 52 week high of $13.80, and it was at the end of August, she had a low of 63 cents. Looking at our six month, four hour view, our high was $8.98 just back in February. Big fall underneath the 200. Looked like she wanted to break out here in May, but that was a false breakout. She kept falling down to this low at the end of August. Now, off of that low, she got on top of her 50 and started showing some incentive to get over that 200. The closer it was getting, the more jumps we were seeing, but it was still too far away. Right here, she started to move on the 5th. I don't think it's because the 200 was close, but here on the 3rd, the news press came out that the company was looking for strategic alternatives. So just that in itself, plus the 200 was getting close. All of that together, she jumped. Broke through the 200 and then news came out today, not only that they had a big investor getting 20% of the company, but they were thinking about a $1 dividend. <laughs> there we go, folks. She's off and running. And today she opened up, oh, she was way down here. Pre-market, she was at $1.10 and she did hit $3.15 falling back. I'm not quite sure where she's at right now. Looks like $1.96 somewhere in there. Volume was super intense today. Oscillators are showing that intensity, but they did cool off at the back half of the day right there. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, 
Well, you can see she did want to break out. She was trying. She was hanging around the 200 here. Got on top of it, on top of her 50 as well. Looking for an excuse to run. And boy, she had lots of them. Between strategic alternatives and $1 dividends, she was off and running. She took that first bounce and fell down to the 20-day SMA. Ripped and she's fallen and she looks like she's underneath the nine day. She could come all the way down to the 20. You got to remember, as I said, the price, these SMAs, they can't get too far apart from each other. They're like on rubber bands. And as soon as it gets too far apart, smash, they come right back to each other really fast. Oscillators. There was a lot of heat on the board, but as I said, the back half of the day is cooling everything down right now. Looking at our five day, five minute, she was on top of her 200, hanging there for most of the week, and then she jumped and she bounced. Look at that serious bounce right there. Off of that 200, launching, coming back down, and she is sitting on top of her 200. That is a good thing to see right there. Has she bounced off it? No, she's sitting right there just above her 200. Oscillators, uh, they say she's still falling. But <laughs> her RSI is rising right now. So the down pressure, but we do have people bidding up. So the stock right now, she looks like she's on a slight downhill trend, but she's got a dollar dividend that they have not approved. So that could be a catalyst in itself. When a news press comes out and says the company has approved a dividend of $1, I seen it just move again, <laughs> and they give us a date, that's going to be it, folks. You're going to want to be in it on that day because when that news press comes out, it should really get a good rip, but it will be a rocket. I do expect there to be some bounces, but most people aren't going to sell until that cutoff date, which they call the record date. The record date is actually two days before the date they give you. The reason that is is because of transaction time. You buy it today, it doesn't show up as yours two days from now. So if you buy it on the very last day, you're not going to qualify for the dividend. It won't show up on the records till two days later. So whatever date they give us, two days before that. But as soon as that news press comes out, I'm expecting NBSE to do another catapult. Next ticker we're going to take a look at is another hot cannabis company. This stock has been running ever since the DEA buzz started. She was an atypical breakout chart, but she's broke out. She has gone over 300% in the last five days. And this is a huge cannabis company making huge revenues. And I'll bet you've never heard of it. This is Air Wellness, ticker AYRWF. Now, this is another Canadian company that's got offices here in the States, so they're doing business here in the United States. She finished the day today at $2.60 with just a little bit over 21% gains. She's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX, so you're getting those audited financials and a buku bucket of other information. You're also getting all those green ticks we're looking for, verified profile, transfer agent, the bonus, the penny stock exempt, and independent directors telling us they may be considering uplisting. So what is Air Wellness about? Well, they tell us here they are an expanding, vertically integrated U.S. multi-state cannabis operator focusing on high growth markets. The company cultivates and manufactures branded cannabis products for distribution through their own network of retail outlets and dispensaries and through third-party stores. AIR strives to enrich and enliven consumers' experience every day, helping them to live their best lives elevated. Yeah, I guess that sounds better than saying I live my best life high. <laughs> Elevated sounds better. So I'm jumping over here to their website to give you an idea of some of the products that they have. And I like the way they word this. Our differences make a difference. Extraordinary runs in our family from wicked good edibles to beverages that pack a punch. We pick and choose only the finest plants and the highest performing ingredients to elevate your cannabis experience. And they basically cover the gamut when it comes to products. And they've got lots of different brands. They've got flour, vapes, beverages, edibles, concentrates, and edible vapes. What the heck is that? I don't even know what the heck you do with it. Do you eat it or do you smoke it? Or do you smoke it first and then eat it? <laughs> I don't know. 
we get a little more information here about the company. The company is currently in eight states. They own 85 dispensaries, and they are processing roughly 6 million transactions a year. That's a busy company. They have got 18 cultivation and production facilities spanning 1.3 million square feet. Their last quarter results reflected an 18% growth year over year in their revenues. And they say that they plan to generate positive cash flow from operations for the full year of 2023. That all sounds good to me. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's not a bad increase. We went from about 160,000 shares up to 2.3 million. And she is climbing. <laughs> Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count is at 63, 64 million. The insiders own only 1.4 million. Really? And that leaves us with about 62 million shares. It's not a bad float. It's an average float. Now let's take a look at those financials because they're making good money here. As you can see, it is increasing by leaps and bounds year after year. Starting in 2019 with $85 million. Don't forget those three zeros. Jump into $155 million to $357 million to the last year, $465 million. And they got to keep $190 million of it. Looking at our quarterly financials, pretty good actually. Uh, a year ago, they were doing $98 million and they just came out with financials. They did $116 million in the last quarter. And it is the strongest profits that they've made yet. Everything looking good. Looking at their balance sheet, in the bank, they have $80 million, total assets, $1.7 billion, and total liabilities, just under a billion. So they got more assets than liabilities, and they got strong revenues. Looking at their disclosures, we have lots of 6Ks here, and I did poke my head into them. Most of them have to do with financials, or they correlate to news. And there is a lot of news over here. I've only gone back to the end of June. The company reaches a contingent agreement to defer approximately $69 million promissory note payment. That's important. They got to take care of this debt, especially until the DEA does something about this rescheduling. Once they do that, these companies are going to get tax deductions. Everything they get to deduct is more money in their pockets, more money they're going to have, and it's going to lift the profit margins. It's going to make these companies worth more. Here in July, the company announces refinancing and upsizing of Gainesville Cultivation Facility Mortgage. And also in July, the company announces agreement to acquire third Ohio dispensary license. Another one in July. What a busy month for them. Uh, Air Cannabis Dispensary strengthens Florida retail footprint with three new locations. And then here in August, the company is to bring award-winning cannabis brand Kiva Confections to Florida. So they're expanding, they're getting their products out there further and further, and their revenues are growing in a big way. And the chart is on fire. <laughs> Let's go take a look at it. We're now taking a look at Air Wellness, ticker AYRWF, and I have a full chart up right now. She came on the market on December 7th, 2020. A little while after she came on, she hit her high of $37.50. She hit her absolute low in April of $0.57. Cents. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. <laughs> well, our high in the last six months was today. We hit it. It was $2.65. There's that $0.52 cent low. She dropped down to that. And after hitting that low, she wanted to get up over top of that 200 We had a nice breakout here, and it looked successful. But she came down underneath the 200 And she's been meandering around that 200 for months until the DEA buzz started. And she started pushing up here at $0.82 cents and went up to $2.65. You're looking at a 300% run there with all green bars. Floating on our nine-day SMA, you can see the volume is incredibly growing. Oscillators are all on fire. Every single one of them is a rocket going to the moon right now. 20-day, one-hour view. 
nothing going on hit that low bubble who could tell it looked the same the day after but when the dea's news came out everything changed and she has taken off osculators are still very strong in the one hour chart and all of our smas are perfectly laid out that looks sweet five day five minute <laughs> that looks sweeter we got a low bubble in this corner of 80 cents and a high bubble in that corner of two dollars and 65 cents in five days there's a 300 percent gain there riding above the 200 the entire time virtually above the 50 day the entire time it is still looking good she is bouncing off of her 50 right now pushing up towards her 200 haul everything is solid here looking at our oscillators let's get a closer look all right, our PPO is starting to climb again. Our MACD is pushing away from the signal line, and our RSI on the five minute is at 75.75. And look at that. It's a beautiful bounce off, folks. This is looking very hot. She doesn't need a direct catalyst. All she needs to do is be cannabis. If she's making good revenues, that's going to help. If she's working in the States, that's going to help. She's got all the above. AYRWF. It's another hot cannabis company. Now, I showed you one at the beginning. There is more due diligence necessary for both of these companies. And NBSE, that needs some more due diligence too. But all of them have got catalysts right now. All of them are hot on the charts. Check them out. See what you think. Remember, it's your money you're investing, not mine. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.